I received an email from DeMarco and he unfortunately keeps getting hurt. And his question to me was why? When it comes to injuries, I've put together previous videos talking about flexibility associated with strength training. We've talked about increasing your nutrition intake of quality and quality quality and quantity foods, excuse me, to make sure that the density and the thickness and the durability of bones, tendons, ligaments, and muscles, they're strong literally from the inside out. But in today's video associated with injuries, what I want you to think about is at what level of intensity are you training and how much load are you moving when you're in the gym? This may seem like an awkward type of conversation because most people think when they go to work out, they need to move more weight in the gym. They think when they're going to be doing something sport specific that the load always needs to be more. In theory, you're absolutely correct. But here's my question. How much load is too much load? How much extra speed is too much speed? If you're a runner, I'll just use this for a very simple illustration in the ease of numbers. If you're somebody who can go out and run a 5K and hold a six minute pace, and you decide that you're gonna to go to the track and run an interval, 400 meters, 440 yards, one lap around the track. At a six minute pace, that's a 90 second quarter mile repeat. Where I've seen people get hurt is their current race pace is 90 seconds per quarter. They go to the track and they try to run 20 to 30 seconds faster. So instead of running maybe an 85 second quarter, they try to run a 75 or a 70 or even a minute for that matter, especially when you're training with other people. And that's the takeaway from this video today. How much load is too much load? What's that next level to get you, that next level of speed or that next level of load that's gonna guarantee that there's an incremental improvement without getting injured and a setback? This is what makes any level of athletic performance and any kind of athletic training, this is the finite science of it. How much is too much and how much is too little? If you are, if, excuse me, if you have the ability on a piece of paper to write two circles, I want you to get them to where they overlap, write two circles, and where they overlap in the middle, that's what we refer to as the sweet spot. The circle on the left would be under training, the circle on the right would be over training. Obviously, for the sake of this video, what we're talking about is how do we know where that center overlap, that sweet spot is at, and that's just documentate document, document, documentation, document, documentation. I can't emphasize that enough. If you call me and you decide that you're gonna implement one of our consultation calls, the more information you can bring to the conversation, the easier it is for me to help you understand where's that finite line? How do you know when it's time to bump up? Let's go back to the gym for a moment. How do you know when it's time to bump up bicep curls by two and a half to five pounds? Should you go two pounds or should you go even one pound? If you don't have a one pound dumbbell, how would you add that incremental load to a bicep curl? Shoulder press, leg press, hamstrings, calves, whatever the it may be. I'm gonna get a little bit on a sour note here for a moment, but this is what aggravates me to no end with these so-called internet trainers that are just saying lift heavy or what's the definition of heavy? My job is to make sure that my clients know exactly how much is the next incremental load? What is the next level of incremental speed? Finding that sweet spot to where the body will get enough stimulation to get stronger and faster and more durable without running the risk of injury. Now for the sake of this conversation on this video here, you may not be a client of mine and that's fine. We don't put these videos together only for our members and our clients, excuse me. We put it together to try to break the plethora of misinformation that's out there. So what I want to leave you with on this video is try to stick to the rules of 1%. It doesn't matter if it's strength training. It doesn't matter if it's um, speed work or endurance work. If you're trying to improve your endurance and you're currently running 30 minutes a week, just add three minutes. Now, with my clients, we do have an, a couple other analytical formulas that we utilize and it's way beyond the scope of what's here. And I don't even have my clients worry about it because that's what I do to serve my clients. Letting them know what is the next level, whether that be duration or speed or load in the gym. But for the sake of the video, just stick to the rule of 1%. And 
depending on where you're at in your, if I go back to strength training, depending on where you're at in the training season, let's say that you're in preseason where you're lifting heavy, our goal is to get to that six to eight rep range. When you add 1% and you can do eight reps with perfect form, then go up another 1%. If you get to where you, you're working hard to get to six reps, you're in that sweet spot until six becomes easy to eight, please don't move it up. Some of you may be even doing four to six reps. The, the repetition count is not my focus in this video today. It's knowing when and by how much to make sure that you don't get injured. So I hope that'll really resonate with you. I've used it for years with people that I don't work with on a one-on-one -on -one basis and have had tremendous results and I wanna share that with you today. If you happen to have a question, please do me a favor and send me an email. Every day we're answering a question, your question here on YouTube. Send it to contact at coachrob.com. As I said, we're answering a video, excuse me, answering a question and putting it into a video format every day here on YouTube. So please subscribe, turn on the notifications. Thank you for your time today and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow.